Okay, so I'm going to look at making some materials for this project, and I'm going to do that before I uh, select any objects to assign them to, uh, by just making sure I'm on the Manage tab, and there you'll find the Materials button, which takes you to the materials in your project. So when you click Materials, you'll see a panel come up that'll show you a fairly big list of materials. These aren't all the Revit materials, these are just the materials in your particular project file. So when you start a project in Revit, you use a template, and you might remember you used the architectural template to begin this project right at the beginning, and that architectural template contains these materials. So, I want to make a flooring material to start with. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So the um, list down the bottom, if you scroll right down, you'll see it has uh, a bunch of wood materials, which are a good starting point for what I want to make. And that's the best way to begin to make a new material. You'll see, if you have a look right down the bottom, there are tools that let you make a new material from scratch, but then you have to set up everything. And you'll see when I go into it, there are a lot of things to set up, and if you can have the work done for you, in advance so it can make it a lot easier. So the first step is to find a material in this list that's similar to what you want. Okay, so I want to make a, flo a wood flooring material, so I'm going to choose wood flooring as my starting point. And then these are the steps to remember. Once you've found the one you want, right click on that material and then go to duplicate. So that will make a new material with the same name, but a one or a two after it. And I'll change that name to Wood Floorboards. Then, well, this material is being used already in your project, mm -hmm. and so it'll change that material on the objects Everything. that it's being used for. Yeah. And uh, so that's why you'll see a lot of people at first when they're using Revit have things changing unexpectedly when they don't mean them to. Yeah. And it's usually because they don't realise where those materials are being used. So it's a good idea, if you want to make a new material that you want to use on, a new, on an object you've made, then duplicate it so that it's not going to interfere with every, anything that's already there. Because you won't know where that material is being used. So now, if I go to, uh, you'll see I'm on the Graphics tab on the right. If I then go to Appearance, you'll see then that it's got still there wood flooring and there's a one. Okay, and that's because the, the render appearance or the appearance part of the material is also a separate entity. It exists on its own and it's being used by objects already in the project and you won't know what they are. So again, you need to duplicate this or replace it with something else. You've got those two options. So you can right click on the tab there, on the appearance tab and you've got the option to either duplicate, which makes a new appearance aspect or just replace, and that's what I'd suggest, that you replace it with something new, and so again, you're starting from scratch with a new, essentially a new material. So there's those two steps, duplicate over here first, and then on the appearance tab, duplicate or replace, and in this case, I'm going to replace, and that takes you to the render library. And you'll see why we've got these two parts to every material in a moment, when I show you them in action. So, on the left hand side, you've got two main folders. You've got the Autodesk folder, which has lots of subfolders. And then you have the Appearance folder. And that's the one I'd suggest you use, Appearance. And if you click on the arrow next to that, you'll see, again, all these subfolders. And so people will often tell you that it's got a big library of materials to start with, um, but, and it does but you don't get to it until you're at this point where you're setting a new appearance. And then if I go down to wood, again I'm going to click on the arrow next to that and, uh, and you'll see there are panels there. And so these panel materials would work fairly well as flooring. But also if you go to the flooring uh, folder and click on the panel of the uh, arrow there, you'll see there's a wood folder where, again, we've got lots of different uh, wood flooring materials. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm simply going to double click on uh, one of these once I find one that I'm happy with. Okay, so if you double click, that will replace the material. You can see now it's gone back into the panel uh, behind. So I'll just do that with a different one. Maybe we'll go for um, just a lighter colour. Okay, so you can see again that's changed this appearance panel. Okay, so I'm going to close this asset browser, it's called. And now you'll see my appearance has changed. And if you look at what, you, what you're seeing there, and it's good guys, just, just watch what I'm doing for now. There's no point trying to follow along with this because there's a lot of steps. Um, so again, looking at what we're seeing there, that's a photo. And so it's using an image that's actually a photograph of those floorboards uh, that'll be used in rendering. And so that's one part of your material. Then if you go to the graphics tab, what you're seeing there is the setup you'll have in the other graphics modes in your shaded views and your hidden line views, essentially. So you've got two parts to it. You've got the colour, uh, and I'm just going to tick render, use render appearance there, which will try to match the colour that I have on the appearance tab. Okay, and this colour, it's a, you know, a mix of colours, so it's doing its best to match that colour here. If you want to adjust it afterwards, turn that off, and then you can adjust that further using the standard RGB colours. You can, you can click anywhere here. So any of these things will let you change the colour? No, 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 before, in the colour, in the... Oh yeah, on the colour swatch, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can change it to purple if you want to purple. Yeah, any colour in the spectrum, all 18 or 20 million or so colours, yeah. So it's red, green and blue. If you haven't used red, green and blue to set colours, have a look at how primary colours work and you'll see red, green and blue can create any colour. And so, so that's my colour that I'll see in shading. I might make that a bit more, a bit more red. Okay, so that's the first part, the, just the basic colour you have. And then you've got the line work. So there are, again, two parts to that. There's a surface pattern. So that's what you'll see on the outside of your object. And it's floorboards, so I want to see some line work. I'm going to click on that None swatch for the pattern. And because it's a, um, a surface pattern, good rule of thumb here is just to use model every time. You use model because? Because it's seen from the outside, so we want the size to be one to one, essentially the real world scale. So that, that's what model means. And again, I've got the uh, different patterns here. So for now, you can just choose any of those from the list there. And 150 mil horizontal, or 100 mil horizontal is okay for floorboards. <coughs> then the cut pattern, I'll just click on that swatch. And again, you can see it shows the two options, but you only have one option that you can choose, drafting. And that'll remind you which one you should be using. So. I don't even know why they give you the option of drafting for a surface pattern, to be honest. I don't think you should ever use... Yeah, don't, just don't ever use drafting. Use model every time. And if you don't remember, you'll see when you go to cut pattern, you don't have the option there for model. So just use drafting for it. And I don't want a pattern for the floorboards uh, because they'll be thin anyway. So the chances are I won't see much of a pattern. And so I'm going to set that to no pattern. So you'll see that's an easy one to miss. You don't have it in the list here. It's the button down the bottom next to the OK button. And so that's my material made. I've done all of it there. So the appearance is done, the graphics is done, and so I'll click OK. And then I'm going to show you an easy way to apply these materials. It doesn't always work. So I'll have to look at all the different ways of assigning them in a minute. But for now, to quickly assign materials to a surface, if you go to the Modify tab, you'll see the paint button. Okay, so you've got here paint. And with paint, you can choose most of the surfaces in your project. First, you need to choose the material here in the browser. So this is why you need to go and make them first. 
and then going through the list here, you'll see any materials you've made, and there's my wood floorboards material. And now I can choose the top of this floor, and you can see then the pattern that I've made. So that's the showing the lines, the 100 mil horizontal lines, with that colour that I set. If I change it here to realistic, then we'll see the photograph which shows that rendering material. Okay, so that's why you need the two different aspects. You've got that graphical display, which is what you're seeing on the shading panel, or the graphics panel, and then you've got the appearance, which you use for rendering, which you have on the appearance tab. And all materials need those two, those two aspects. Can you use the paint um, on any walls? No, not everything. Oh yeah, on most walls and things like that. So I'll do another one. So here, I've got already, in the list, you've got quite a few uh, pre-made materials. So, you'll have a brick material, if you go down to masonry, you've got masonry brick. So it's already there, I don't need to make that. And now I'm still in the, in the paint tool, I've got the materials panel still up there, and so now I can choose any surface on the outside of these uh, walls, and set them to be brick. Now you can see the, um, the roof is already using that material, so I'm going to change it, I'll just change this other wall, and you do need to check when you move the cursor around, make sure it's showing you the right, the right thing. So maybe I don't want the, the roof anymore to be that same material, so I'm going to see in the list there if I've got a roofing material. Okay, and I do, we've got roofing tile. So, it doesn't have a very good appearance there, but that's okay, it's got the name. So I'm going to choose it and assign it to my the top of my roof there. I'll do this to the other one. And then I'll do it to the other part of the roof as well. The edge of the roof we probably don't want to be brick either, but maybe I want that to be a more basic material. And a good material to use when you're not sure is one called finish, because that's usually just said to be a plain white material. And so try not to change that one, just leave that, leave that one alone, and then you'll always have it there if you need to just give it something plain. Plain meaning white? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can go around choosing all these surfaces here and uh, the roof will look a lot better. Well, the edges of it do, but the top still doesn't have that tile finish that you might want. So, what I'm going to do now is go back to Manage, Materials, and find that name, that roofing tile material, and you can see again it's got that appearance that is not very good. The graphics I'm not so worried about, I'm happy for it to just be grey without um, much of a pattern even, but if I go to appearance I maybe want that to look more like tiles. Okay, so again the same approach I used before, I'm going to right click on that tab, go to replace, and then in the appearance folder there click on the arrow, go down to roofing and you'll see all these different roof materials. So I'll choose maybe the shake there, double click, and you can see that that's put it into the appearance for my roofing tile material. You can see it there, click OK, and you can see now it's changed that material in the project. Oh, without going back to... No, because that's right, because I'd assigned that material, it was just set to be grey before, now I've changed that material, so I don't need to go and choose those objects again, because they already have the material, and so therefore the material, when it's changed, is going to change on all those objects. Okay, but notice these walls, because they were separate walls, they all need, if I want the same brick material, I need to go and choose each of those separately, so I need to go and find, sorry, with the paint tool, back to modify, I can go to paint, 
and then find that masonry brick material and then go and choose each of those faces and you might think well this is pretty tedious going and choosing every face of every object in your project and uh, you know with all the management tools that you've been no probably noticing in Revit that might seem like a very slow way of doing things and it is it's not the way you normally assign materials it's a quick and rough way which is good to start with but what I'll show you I'll do another recording afterwards and show you how to assign materials in the properties of the objects uh, instead of using the paint tool no you can't that's, a, that's, that's one of the limitations. So yeah, I'll show you. If I choose paint here, it won't let me choose um, all of the different uh, elements even in this railing. So it's letting me choose the rail there, but the balusters, it won't let me choose. And, uh, and again, yeah, furniture is a good one to think about. You'll see there, with most of the furniture objects, it won't let you choose any of those surfaces there. So how can you, you can't change, so you'll be found... Oh, you can change. Furniture. Yeah. Okay. You can change anything, but you just, you just do it in a different way. Oh. So, uh, so we'll get into that later, but the main surfaces, things like walls and floors and roofs and ceilings, you can use the paint tool to set the surface. Yeah, um, and, uh, but also think about how you can do it in properties. I'll show you how to do that afterwards. But, uh, but yeah, just to remind you, so those two main steps. So the first thing was on the Manage tab, go to Materials and try to make a new material. And then on the Modify tab, use the paint tool to assign a material to some of your main surfaces.